going to come out flew here from New York just to be here with you tonight. He is a comedian who has made many videos supporting us while we were occupying our state capitol building. Uh, he's also been very active in the Occupy movement around the country, both on Wall Street, in Washington, D.C., Occupy Asheville, North Carolina, and Occupy Montreal. Uh, he's a, a contributor to The Onion, and he's been on Comedy Central, and he also writes in the Huffington Post. But he's perhaps best known for going live on Fox News and calling them a parade of propaganda and a festival of ignorance. Please welcome Lee Camp. All right, how you doing, Wisconsin? Give it up one more time for John Nichols and everyone you see. One more time, let him hear us so far. It's such a pleasure to be here. By the way, just as a little warning, because I'm a comedian, I use some bad words, okay? Although you may, although you will almost definitely agree with everything I'm saying, if you can't handle bad words, please step out of the room. Although, or if you have kids, although I've got to warn you that if you've ever let kid, your kids see uh, Scott Walker speak, then uh, they've seen something far more obscene than anything I can give them. It is an incredible pleasure to be here and to, to help you. And, and not only do I think uh, that, that you should recall Scott Walker, I think you should get it to the point that people cannot recall Scott Walker. <laughs> 20 years from now, I want to see a conversation where like, remember that guy, he was, uh, he was our uh, commander in douche for a while, what was his name? And they're like, I can't recall, I can't. It's, it's amazing to be here. Uh, I, I, I did back when, back, well, actually, let's go even before when you were initially occupying the capital, the, uh, what was going on in Egypt. I have a web series and I, I did a video on what was going on in Egypt. And I said, you know, it's amazing what's going on in Egypt. And the problem is, it can't happen here. Because how long could we go standing in a standing in a in a, in a capital or in a park somewhere chanting for, for what we stand for before we realized we were missing glee? How long could people really go without a latte and a mani patty? You know? And then, not a, but a few weeks later, you proved me wrong. And I'm proud that you proved me wrong. It was incredible. And, and, and then I, I, I did some uh, videos about what you guys were doing. And, and, uh, and, and, and it's amazing to see how that, you know, John mentioned it, how that energy has, has circled back around, how it really, it all, what's going on with Occupy, 100% started here. You showed America it could be done, you did. You, you, you stood up and you showed it and it started as a little bit of energy and it spread like a wave at a football game or a rash at a nudist colony, you know, it just... It's across the country. It's been absolutely amazing, you know, and, and to see these, and there is an incredible, obvious link between what's going on here and what's going on with the Occupy, not just in the energy, but in the, the, the concept, what it is. It's corporate control of our government, of our democracy, of our nation. That's what it is, you know, and, and so that's how it links. And, and to watch them go after, after unions, and I realize I'm preaching to the choir here, but when I talk to people in, like, New York, or something, sometimes you have to remind them when they're, you know, saying bad Things about you. I'm like, hey, uh, you know, unions are responsible for tiny, forgettable things like a weekend and a nine to five and health care if you got it. And, and just getting children out of the workplace alone was crucial because kids are shitty workers. You know, they don't know what they're doing. They're pushing all kinds of buttons on the machines, lopping dudes' arms off. You're like, they're like what, do you, what do you mean, whoopsie? You worked here four years since you were three. You should have this shit down by now, right? <laughs> they just suck. <laughs> and they're going after teachers, and, 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 and you know, teachers are heroes. Teachers, teachers. <laughs> teachers deal with those little shitheads all day long. They get paid less than the guy at the zoo in charge of making sure the hippos mate, you know? 
really? You're gonna go after them? And it's it's just incredible. It's it, it, like like the the, the the a fair wage should be such an easy debate. I don't care if you have the worst job. I don't care if your job is is cleaning up turds out of the corner of the turd factory. If you work full time, you should be able to afford to feed and clothe your kids. You know, first of all, right? First of all, moral thing to do. Secondly, with the size of our kids, none of us want to see them half clothed. You know? None of us want to see a ten-year-old boy's tits bouncing up and down on a sweaty summer day. Can't we get together as a country and buy that boy some pasties? You know? Come on. And I realize Bill O'Reilly would call them socialist nipple tassels, but I don't care. I'd rather have socialist nipple tassels and capitalist boy boobs in my face. I'm just saying. I'm going to run for office on that platform. Yeah. All right, apparently I lost some of you on that one. Okay, this is for those of you that didn't like the last one. Have you ever noticed the words unicorn and acorn both mean one corn? Okay, we all back together? All right, good. You know, and it's amazing, you know, the, 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 the people that caused the 2008 collapse, and, and, and they're, 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 none of them have gone to jail, none of them, they're richer than they've ever been, and now they're going after unions and benefits and those kind of things. It's like, I don't, I don't even know, I didn't, back then, I didn't even know who to blame. Like, for a while, I blamed Bush and Cheney, because they're evil, and then I blamed the Democrats, because they're spineless, and then for a while, I blamed David Hasselhoff. That was a weird time for me, really. <laughs> you know, weird time. But, but it... it, it it, it is. It's, those, it's the same, you know, the, 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 the top 1% incredibly wealthy individual. And there's ways, we've all kind of accepted this corporate raping and pillaging of our world like it's a, except, except maybe here in Wisconsin, the one place they haven't, but we've all kind of accepted it like it's a Black Eyed Peas song, you know? We're like, well, it's going to be around for a while. Might as well pretend like we like it. You know, and there's... There's little ways to fight back. There's little ways. There's big ways, like protesting, which I think are crucial. There's little ways, too. Like, if your job steals your health care, just steal their staplers. Just, just take their staplers. Yeah, I might not get the liver transplant I need, but good luck of fixing two pieces of paper together, you assholes. You know? Just little shit. Streak through a board meeting. Slip a photo of your ass into the PowerPoint presentation. I know who I, whose ass it was. It's little stuff, right? Take your family on a vacation to the oil-covered beaches of the Gulf of Mexico. Take a bunch of Christmas card photos, send one to the head of BP, and write, Happy Hanukkah! This oil's lasted more than eight days. It's a miracle! It's little stuff. You know, take your money out of the big banks that have screwed our entire economy. Put it in a little bank, put it in a milk carton, and if you want to feel like you're at a big bank, every time you take money out of the milk carton, flush a dollar fifty down your toilet and smack your grandmother. <laughs> Just like you're at a big bank. Also, going to the one, one of the big banks, say you want to open a, a business account, and then when you're sitting in that little office with them discussing it, just slowly start taking a dump in your pants. <laughs> Never mention it, maintain eye contact. Don't hurry, they've got nowhere to be, all right? Just let the smell fill the entire place. If they want to shit on this country, then it's going to come right back at them. Just be a thorn in their side, a wrench in the gears, and a herpes sore on their lip, you know? It might not kill them, but a million herpes sores will make them rethink who they're screwing. <laughs> Lost a couple again? Right. <laughs> the only reason we wrap gifts is for that one second of surprise. Couldn't we get the same effect by just throwing the gift at the person? <laughs> and then they'd be surprised even if they knew what you were going to give them. They'd be like, I knew you were giving me a clock radio, but not at that speed. <laughs> nice but yeah, so the... But it, it is. The, the Occupy movement is a 
amazing to watch because it is really people finally standing up. And, and you can see the same media cycle that happened here happening with Occupy. It's the same strategy. It's like first ignore it and then call them dirty slobs, right? And that was the, that was the first video I did on what you guys were doing was when you had senators calling you slobs. And I, and I was like, you know what? Nothing, nothing noble and impassioned and powerful that has ever happened in this country has happened while clean. All right? This stuff is dirty. That's what it is. Revolution doesn't take place in a, in a, a, a living room with your shoes off so as not to sully the carpet or the labradoodle. You know? It takes place sleeping in a Capitol building for three weeks. That's how it is. And then, and then they called us down in Occupy, and they called us, oh, it's just young people, it's just young people. Well, yeah, it might be young people that actually are able to sleep in some of these areas, but, it, but you look at the marches, and it's every age, color, creed, it's everybody is marching in these things. And even if it were young people, who do you think has to sit around in this shitstorm for the next 70 years? You know, who do you think has to... Has to Breathe the tainted air and eat the mutated fish and watch the fetid reality shit on TV that's creating a nation of malignant imaginations. You know, who do you think has to sit in this rancid bathwater twiddling our thumbs and flicking our ding dongs, going, hey, remember back when we could have changed this thing? We should have, like, done something. <laughs> And our kids are going to say to us, well, what were you doing back when we could have changed course? And what are we going to say? Well, there was a cool video game called Angry Birds. Played a, played a lot of that. There was a cooking show, I think. You know, and then, and the other thing that Occupy has really shown us, and, 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 and what the occupation that you guys did here is, is that we love free speech in this country. It's incredibly important to us, and we have it until we don't. We have it until it's on a sidewalk someone doesn't like, or it's near a building someone doesn't want you to be near, or it's, or it's near a building with, with guys in suit pants and women in pantsuits. Then, not so much, you know. I think I remember this. I think it was a Dr. Seuss book, wasn't it? You cannot have it in the park, you cannot have it after dark, you cannot have it with some geese, you cannot have it according to the police. If you love a freedom of speech, be damned, Uncle Sam, I am. Remember that one? I mean, they're arresting, they're arresting people in Occupy Wall Street for using bullhorns or writing in chalk on the sidewalk. You know, they're, they're arresting people, and they say, well, it disrupts the social order. It disrupts the social, you know, it disrupts the social order, foreclosing on millions of homes. Sucking, sucking money out of infrastructure to, 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 to put in the wallets of your friends, you know, that... That's what disrupts the, 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 the social order. We've got, we've got flood levees collapsing and bridge, bridge buttresses falling over. People are floating by on old mattresses. But you think chalk messages is what's going <laughs> to fuck shit up? Yeah? You think that's really going to disrupt the social order? Like people are going to see chalk and they're going to be like, Oh, chalk! Run! Who has the antidote for the chalk? <laughs> get some of these bankers finally arrested, if we had a chant that was good enough that they accidentally joined in, you know, maybe then we could finally arrest them. If it was something they really liked, you know, like, go ahead and call us twats, we have credit default swaps. You know, then, maybe we could finally arrest them. Maybe finally. And look, I understand that a lot of these police officers get it, and a lot of them are doing their job, but there's got to be a little voice in the back of their head that's like, hey, maybe I should be uh, arresting the bankers and the economic rapers rather than beating up this 19-year-old girl with a henna tattoo because she's trying to save the world with arts and crafts. You know, I, there's got to be a little voice in the back of their head that's like, wow, I just pawned
pawned my grandma's wedding ring so we could afford daycare, so my wife could get a second job, so we could afford the Alzheimer medicine for my father. And maybe I shouldn't be, uh, you know, pepper spraying the, 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 the little kid with, who's trying to save the world by drawing less money for smart bombs and more money for smart kids. Maybe that's not the answer. the media's technique and, you know, uh, uh, the, one of their techniques was to call us dirty. And one of the earliest reports, finally, it took about a week before the New York Times would even cover Occupy Wall Street. And one of the first reports they did was a half-page thing about how Occupy Wall Street was doing harm to area restrooms. <laughs> so you care more about the harm done to area restrooms than the harm done to the American people by corporations and Wall Street titans who make Charlie Sheen's moral compass look like that of Harriet Tubman. Really? Really? Really, the corporate elite are shitting all over this world, and I don't think you're writing about that. You know, that's what needs cleaning up. They, they said that, that mothers, they said that mothers had trouble getting their strollers around police barricades. Well, God forbid that the revolution should get in the way of your evening stroll with little trust fund. <laughs> and this is a revolution. It may not be a traditional revolution, but it's a revolution in thought. People are tired of greed over good, of profitable pollution over people, war for wealth over the welfare of citizens, you know? People are tired of that shit, and, and, and the revolution will not be tidy, it won't be sanitized, it'll be criticized, misunderstood, misconstrued, but it'll push through, alright? Because it's not going to be dissuaded by police barricades, ankle sprains, driving rain, or pepper spray. Pepper spraying us is like throwing water on gremlins. The more you do it, the more yeah. of us fucking show up. <laughs> and the revolution might not fit with your Pilates schedule. You know? It's not going to wait until after your hair appointment, your dinner party, Tommy Tucker, titty tilt. All right? The revolution will not be televised, as Gil Scott Heron told us, but it will be digitized and posted on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and anywhere real ideas are told. You might have to scroll through a couple of requests for Farmville, but it'll be in there. It'll be in there. You know, this is, this is a thought revolution, and it doesn't care about your intellectual lack of curiosity, all right? Lack of intellectual curiosity. It's not going to fit easily into a mainstream media-defined paradigm. You know, and the, and the revolution would, however, like to apologize for shitting all over your apathy. Now, pick a side. <laughs> I want to open an adult video store in Nebraska called Porn on the Cob. <laughs> Some of you didn't laugh, but you were like, that's a good idea. <laughs> and, we're, and, and that's the other thing, besides showing America that, that we don't really have free speech when, when they don't want us to, it's also showing America just how shitty our media really is. Because people knew this was going on, whether they were covering it or not. They covered it eventually, because they were like, everybody's talking about it, and we haven't fucking mentioned it. You know, people have figured out there's something going on here. And, and, and our media is just terrible. One thing, we, we need a lot of things in our media. One thing we need is we need uglier reporters, right? You don't see them much, because it's actors now. But every once in a while, you turn on CNN, and you're like, ugh, that guy worked for his job, right? He knows his stuff. He fought his way to the top. That's, that's why the BBC is so reliable. Really, that group of mongoloid walruses they have on there, journalistic geniuses. I don't know what it is. Something about a couple of teeth in your forehead makes you brilliant. <laughs> well, what do we get? We get this, you know, squad of dickheads and bright-eyed bimbos who miss, who, who miss the cut on the American Idol audition, so now they're reading the result of the G8 summit to the entire country, even though they clearly think G8's a vitamin. <laughs> That's what we get, you know, it's 
all, it's all celebrity bullshit. Who had a baby? Who went into rehab? Whose baby went into rehab? That's all it is. It's all ratings. And, and he, the other thing I think we need to have a more informed uh, populace is we need to take the, the crappy shows that we're all watching anyway. You know, that we all watch them. The stupid cooking shows and the Hitler shows. And, uh, you know, Dancing with the Idiots and all that stuff. And you take that and instead of subliminal marketing, put subliminal truth underneath so you wouldn't even know you're learning something. You know? watching robot cupcake wars like you do every Thursday and underneath would be hey kids make your clothing or you know your governor's destroying your health care or you know why'd you ever give up drawing when you were younger you really enjoyed it and you were quite good and you gave that up to what pile of paperwork 12 hours a day why so you can afford some marble countertop island in your kitchen you don't even use a thing you don't even use a fucking countertop I could understand that life choice if you were humping that countertop every day and twice on Sunday then they always say if you catch on fire, stop, drop, and roll. I think the stop part of those instructions is unnecessary. <laughs> Oh no, I'm on fire! But these cupcakes aren't gonna ice themselves! <laughs> so now we've got our, uh, our lovely tea party. They're fun to watch, right? There's nothing, there's nothing more fun to watch than a politician standing in front of thousands of people and being like, If elected, I will make sure you don't have health care! And they're like, yeah! The other guy can't promise me that. I mean, I'm amazed at what some of these groups of people would be able to believe. You know, there's certain people that, that still believe Saddam Hussein caused 9-11 and President Obama was actually a Kenyan and President Bush was actually elected. You know, it's just... Amazing, and, 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 and you know, and the stuff they're, they're, they're still supporting. I mean, why are we still in Afghanistan? Let's bring our, our kids home. It's both sides of the war in Afghanistan. <laughs> Literally, we're paying the Taliban millions to let our trucks through so that we can fight the Taliban. We're losing a game of solitaire. <laughs> we're playing a game of Twister alone. That's what this is. No wonder a scrappy group of insurgents in torn clothes and flip-flops are able to compete with the most powerful military in the world. They have us on their side. <laughs> That's how they're doing it. And, and, and not standing up for the environment, which still, it all, this is all connected, you know, because the corporations are making the decisions, they're making the decisions of your governor, and, they, and, and those decisions do not include a damn thought about the environment. I mean, it's, it's absolutely amazing. It, 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 like, it came out that, uh, so in 2004, Congress passed the Clean Water Act to keep our water clean. And then it came out, like, last year that it's been violated 500,000 times by corporations and factories, and 3% have been prosecuted. So we know who they are. We know who's dumping carcinogens in our water. And what do we do when a friend or family member gets cancer? You run the 5K, you wear the pink ribbons, and I'm not going to take that away. But well, let's run the 5K to the factory where they're dumping the shit in the water. Take, take all the pink ribbons, use those to tie up the CEO. Then take all the change we made at the Breast Cancer Awareness Bake Sale, put it in the end of a tube, sock and beat the shit out of the guy. Right? <laughs> Nothing excessive. Each of the 10,000 participants would get one swing of the sock. <laughs> Just one swing. I think we need to think about this stuff. You know, it's amazing that, like, the news will tell us how close global warming is, and, and people, a lot of us don't change. Like, ten years ago, they were like, it's a hundred years away, and everyone's like, well, I personally will be dead by then. <laughs> and they were like, we're wrong, it's twenty years away, and everyone's like, well, we'll invent giant air conditioners by then. Now they're like, people in California are on fire! And everyone's like, they probably live in a really fiery area. They're probably storing dry stuff in their homes, like old magazines and elderly people. You know, don't, 
Don't come knocking on my door every time some little shit goes down. Oh, Indonesia's underwater. Well, tell them to get up and move to outer Indonesia. Really? Just so because their little country goes underwater. I gotta stop using plastic bags. And, and, and while we're on the topic, we have to watch every polar bear drift out to sea on a damn ice cube. They're dumb animals. Move south, you idiots. They, they can't figure out a game plan that Geese figured out. Follow the Geese, Magellan. Jesus, you could be in Hawaii right now eating beautiful women with coconuts on their chests. That's a well-rounded meal. That's meat and fruit on the same plates. Hey, guys, I gotta get out of here in a second, but uh, I have a, a, a full-hour uh, stand-up comedy CD on your way out. I'm donating a third of all the proceeds to, uh, to, to recall Scott Walker effort. And